Welcome back to the channel, pals. This is another video, going to be a rundown of our current travels to the north of Portugal, checking out some of the local areas where we were staying and seeing where we like. My parents were over for what turned out to be about three weeks <laughs> after only being booked for around about 13 days and they extended. We had some bad weather in the first place that we stayed and we booked for another four days and then they turned out to miss their flight the first time around in Porto so they stayed in Porto for another three days but had a great time. <laughs> they did have a good time yeah. And they got some better weather in Porto. So, yeah, first place we stayed was Slurico de Basto area. I've been looking online for prospective properties. We actually went and viewed some down by the Douro. Slurico de Basto is a little bit further north of the Douro, and we wanted to look from that sort of region up over towards the Lima, sort of around that region up in the north. We stayed in a lovely villa mm. up in the mountains. The views were stunning, weren't they? It was, mm. wasn't really what we were expecting. We didn't really think of it being like dead mountainous there, but it was mm. beautiful. Really, really lovely area. Mm -hmm. Surprised us. We were living in luxury for four days with a nice pool and the view was spectacular. The area, like Jen said, was unreal. Slurigo de Basto, uh, not far from the river Temega. And from there we first visited Amarante, which was one of Jen's friend's favourite places when they were in Portugal. She recommended it, so we thought we'd give it a try, seeing as we weren't that far away. I think it was about half an hour from where we were staying. Mm -hmm. um, sat on the river, lovely, lovely town, but not mm -hmm. a lot there to be no. honest, but restaurants, cafes, bars, nice like historic centre. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, I think we did get rain whilst we were there, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it wasn't the best of days. It was very beautiful, it had a bit of history there. That was pretty much the rundown for there. While we were there, on the same river, a little bit further up, we just popped in to get some food from the local, local supermarket, Slurico de Mondim, which is a little bit further north up the river. We stopped at a nice cafe there. It seemed like the surrounding area was really nice, like I say, in the mountains again. The river was nice enough. Seemed like there was a few cafes and bars there. Had some nice parks. But all in all, the surrounding area, although we do love the mountains, when you're driving around, it did seem like it took longer than usual to get to places, didn't it? Yeah, you looked at the map and you think, oh, that's not that far away. And then when you actually put it in, because the roads are like this, a very and windy up and road. down, and then it just took forever to get anywhere. The roads are, well, the B roads or even C roads, and you sort of, you're going round mountains instead of over them or through them, and even to get to places that look not too far away on the map, and you were taking more than average, what we would normally expect. So getting around was one of the biggest cons for the Slurico de Basto area and visiting surrounding places. We do like to travel around and want to be in 20 minutes, half an hour from a city which we can visit to go in for a nice meal or drinks or, or just to go out, go in and be around people when we choose. <laughs> After that, whirlwind of four nights, five days, nice, nice little uh, <laughs> villa stay there. Got a couple of nice days of sun on the last two days with m m my parents extending. Decided to just chill around the villa, make use of the pool, had a barbecue and... And Bella brought home some stray dogs. <laughs> which wouldn't leave, I think they were touting for a new home, which unfortunately we're not in the position to at the moment. But yeah, she was making some friends from the local vicinity and yeah, then we moved on to a nice little taste of Portuguese farm style living in a... It's like an 18th century farm that they've been converted into these little apartments and ran by the sweetest little old lady, wasn't mm, she? Maria. The reviews about her, we know now why the reviews were so good because, well, we got broad complimentary wine, we could pick the fruit from the trees and she was giving us recommendations, recommendations to yes. place we actually visited and we didn't really have in our ear shot a place called Santa Terso which we went into and that was some somewhere where we probably wouldn't have thought of going. Well, we hadn't really heard of it and it was quite small like you probably wouldn't even notice it on the map but, mm -hmm. but it was lovely. Yeah she gave some good recommendations. That, that was down by the river with a nice weir which you could get down to and it had a um, a bakery didn't it? That really was... good bakery. We just went and popped in for a coffee didn't we and I just had a look to see what it was about. I found this bakery anyway 
Um, and when we got there, there was queues at the door, it was still popular. People mm. were going in, buying boxes of pastries. Um, so we debated, we were like, oh, should we queue? But I'm glad we did, because yeah. it, was, it was worth it. There were good Definitely pastries. <laughs> Santa Terso, that would be recommended a visit if you're in that area. Moving swiftly on. We headed into Braga, which we'd heard of before, but we didn't really know anything about. We knew it was going to be a big city, and last time we were in the van, we found cities quite stressful, so we kind of mm. avoided it, I think. But um, Love Braga. Yeah, we really, really liked it. It's got a really nice centre. It's got a really nice feel to it. Yeah. Um, when we good moved, atmosphere. We did, didn't we? It was just a nice feel. Had lots of d different sort of squares, if you like, not not as, as as such sort of paved areas with nice restaurants surrounding gardens, and not just one big big main one. It had lots of little different areas. Yeah, when we came to Portugal, we wanted to live by Porto because we've been there, and we do really like Porto. But obviously, the price is going that way on for living near Porto. We still want to be quite near there because that's obviously where the, the nearest airport would be. But I actually, I think we both preferred Braga over Porto as as a as a city to have in mind to live nearby. yeah live nearby and be in half an hour, forty minutes drive from to be able to go in for a meal or shopping or a drink. Yeah, we actually popped in a few times over the next couple of days. Um, for, yeah, for mm. an even meal and ice creams and yeah, um, yeah we, we just like the feel of the place. It yeah, it was really nice, nice at night as well, the square lit up. Everything seems to be in a, a walking distance so you're not having to get trams here and you don't have to be too organised. You can park on the outskirts which was free, walk in, nicely in the same spot but then there's different areas at the same time. Just had a really nice feel to it, the history and everything. So yeah, Braga was probably one of our favourite spots. <laughs>